Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. We are here, it's Tuesday, and our last episode yesterday we kicked off with this team that you can see on your screen in front of you. And it's going to be a bit of a, a strange week where we've got two variations of a Lunala build with Mega Mowa. We're going to kick off with this team yesterday and today and play one game in tomorrow's episode and then we're going to change over to this team which was kindly given to us by Fabian Bake VGC which we'll finish off the week with which will be a bit different we've got Mega Lopunny there, Groudon, Lunala, Mega Mowile, Gastrodon and Tapacoco so we've got two really cool variants as I say we're going to start off with this one here as always the team is down in the description below there is a raw paste poker pairs if you want to try it out just check it out let me know what you do think if you do play around with it though because i would love to hear your opinions on it mega mobile is a very cool pokemon as always and uh, i guess without further ado we need to hop into our right screen let's get into this first one today as always if you do enjoy this sort of content please remember to drop a like on the video do subscribe to the channel for more pokemon content i did talk briefly about some of the the more the the, the other pokemon content that we'll be doing on the channel coming up in the the, the coming weeks forthcoming weeks and um do leave your comments because I will have more time to respond to you guys and I do read them all I do I promise to read them all and uh, I just haven't had the time to get back to you all recently so hopefully as things do settle down and we get back into a rhythm of things here home uh, I'll be able to do that and uh, I think as well as as on top of doing the the road to roulette series I'm gonna be doing the sword and shield stuff we're gonna have the flint squad circus stuff I've got another little surprise coming up in a bit, but we can't get into that right now because we've got our first opponent in the episode, so we'll hop straight into team preview. Okay, my friends, we have a Primal Groudon, Evelto, one of my favorite combinations in the Ultra series, if not all the restricted series that we have. Then we've got Mega Gengar. It's going to be the trapping Pokemon of this team. It's going to make it difficult for us to maneuver around. Going to have to watch out for that Coma All as well because it has got the potential to boost up with that signature Z move, giving it a boost across the board. Um, Tapu Koko going to be really good as well as Mawile for that. Then you've got Incineroar and Stack Attacker. Stack Attacker going to provide trick support for the team probably going to see tailwind from the Veltal, and then you got the intimidate fake out support pivot support from the the incinero that works so well with that mega gengar right i do believe i do believe lunala is very very good in this match um apart from the Eveltal, but it does give us an option to switch out. It helps us set up the Trick Room. I think we're going to need a Kyogre in this match for sure as well. I don't really want to lead out with it though. I think something like Tapu Koko could be nice as a lead here. Um, Mega Mowile for sure, and then Kyogre. And I think we'll lock in with those four, and I think I'm pretty happy to go forward with those. So our opponent is waiting, so we'll get right into it now. Um, yes, the other thing that I'm talking about is I should... If anyone's heard of this game Temtem, if you haven't, hit me up on Twitter. I've retweeted a bunch of stuff that they do. Follow them on Twitter. They, they've got a new game coming out very soon. Um, you can actually get a hold of the better copy if you pre-order the actual game. I think that comes out on the 25th. If you want to know more information about it, hit me up. Just message me on Twitter or somewhere and uh, I'll let you know how to do and go about getting that. But I will be doing content on Temtem 100% once it hits and we'll be doing streams, we'll be doing content on the channel. I'm really excited about this game. It's, it's a lot like Pokemon. The, the the game makers even say it's, it's a lot like Pokemon so uh, I think it'll be something that you guys will probably enjoy and I think it'll be something different that I'm really going to enjoy as well so it'll be a really different kind of take on the channel but it's not going to mean that Pokemon's gone away so don't be worried uh, Pokemon is here to stay for sure um okay I kind of fancy just going for the Trick Room here. Although if we do that, we leave ourselves open to the Incineroar. Going for an attack, and that's never good. Um, uh, but we're going to have to make a decision here. I think we go Psyshock into the Gengar. I think we go for a Volt Switch into the Incineroar. I don't think the Incineroar goes for a Fake Out here. If it does, we could have went for Trick Room. That's pretty much the basis of it. But I'm not feeling super confident about going for a trick room in front of a Gengar and Incineroar here and both can attack us and do some big damage before we can do anything okay so we're gonna get the Volt Switch in um, hmm. the only problem is here we can get Kyogre onto the field 
I don't really want to get Kyle going to the field right now, and I don't really want to have more out on. Actually, we do bring more while here. We get the Intimidate onto the Incineroar. Um, and then we got Sucker Punch to help us against that Gengar the next turn. Which checks that. Although. Uh, yeah, and then we could switch in Kyogre. Which checks then the Incineroar. Because it's going to go for a Z move. Oh, it's going to go just U turn. Okay. I wonder if we're going to see Groudon come in now. Maybe makes sense if we do. Mm -hmm. Do we just press this? Do we just wide guard? Do we just wide guard and suck a punch here? Because there's every temptation that I switch Lunala out for Kyogre. Um, but if we do that, we leave Mowile quite open to a Precipice Blade. And if I wide guard, and the Gengar does get greedy and stay in and want to take down this Lunala, then we can deal with it with the Sucker Punch. But it does switch out. Okay, this isn't the worst, the worst thing in the world. Because if this, if this Groudon goes for Precipice Blade, doesn't suspect the wide guard. Then we've got a really good chance to get our Kyogre in this next turn. And my god, again. Um, oh, Groudon just protects. Okay. My opponent not really want it. They're kind of just getting the feelers out at the minute. We do reveal the wide guard, though. So that's something we got going for us this next turn, for sure. Um, now, I don't believe my opponent goes for... Precipice Blades. And one thing we've got to keep in mind is that we don't want to... <sighs> hmm. Leave ourselves vulnerable where we get Kyogre on the field and the Gengar comes back on and then the Groudon comes back in and we can't really do too much about it. <sighs> can we get... <coughs> My big question would be, can we get the Incineroar with Play Rough from here with Mega Mawile? I'm not sure if we can. Um, but I'm very tempted. I'm going to bring Kyogre in, and I'm going to go for that play rough into the Incineroar. We'll see. Best case scenario is Fire Punch Flare Blitz. For my opponent. But I feel like you may switch out. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we see Precipice Blades here. I think it's too risky going for it in front of uh, when the Y God's already been revealed. Huh. Okay. Well, then a crit on Kyogre, so. Ideal way for us to kick off today. Yeah. <laughs> oh. We could have just Y Guarded and switched in Kyogre. For a mobile. Hmm. Hmm. That is that is very frustrating. There's not very much we can really do now. Um, hmm. Uh yeah, this is this is tough because <laughs> Now the Groudon switches out for Incineroar. Um, I think the Gengar just attacks into Kyogre here, to be honest. I'll try and Trick Room. It's not really going to help us out too much, and it probably doesn't help us with Tapu Koko in the back. Hmm. I feel like this could have been, we could have probably approached this a little bit differently. Um, the crit definitely didn't help, but at the same time, kind of hoping that the Gengar t protects maybe here even. That would be ideal, because that would open the door for us to do some work. Nah, he's just going straight for the Kyogre, I wanted to, to check that. And again, we could have went for the protect there, but... 
At the same time, if we do that, yeah, I think this match is over. Like, the trick room here is never going to be a good thing to set up with, with an Incineroar on the field coming in. It's going to be slower than a Lunala. Um, yeah, and there's not really much we can do now. Hmm. Yeah. My opponent called that blast for that, so we can't really be too mad at how it kind of worked out. Uh, oh, you know what? I ne I never say this. I feel like we'll let my opponent just we'll we'll let my opponent just get the um get the victory here because I want I want not I won't forfeit. I'll let them have it. But in most situations, it's kind of it's kind of like this point where you're like, but it's done. It's really done. Uh, so there's not really much we can do here. Uh, yeah, flare blitz. I wonder if that Incineroar actually has. If it actually has the Dark type move. It has. It has to have. Well, it doesn't have to have. What have we seen? Fake out? Um, for us to beat the crowd on. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it. We get rid of the Gengar. It's all about whether or not this Volt Switch gets the Incineroar here from this range. Life Orb Volt Switch. Can we do it? I don't think we're going to be doing enough damage. No, not quite. Procaberry. Yeah, and that's that's pretty much gonna be it now. And there's the electric terrain going away. Ha uh ha. -huh. Groudon, here we come. In his element in the trick room. Gonna love life. Here we go. I'm not gonna wide guard. There's not really much point. Because this match is definitely over. I mean we wide guard, we take an attack off Incineroar. We've got no way to damage the ground on as long as that Incineroar is out on the field. Um, yeah, we can Volt Switch and we can Moonguide Beam into the ground on. We'll just do that. I don't really want to prolong this match on. But like I say, I'll give the I'll give the victory to my opponent. There's a Flare Blitz. Coco. Maloko. I mean, if we get a bunch of press with Blades misses, I will actually under speed in the ground on, which is interesting. So it's a bit of a faster Groudon. This is a, like not an ideal start for us today. I'm not like super happy with how I've like played this one. Doesn't want to press with blades. Expecting the white guard now, but no white guard. So very good game to my opponent. Uh, making the big pivotal play there would have been the uh, reading us not wide guarding and switching in Kyogre and, and going a little bit down a different route and maybe over predicting ourselves a little bit. But um, it happens sometimes. You get get punished for it heavily in a best of one um, game but that's just how it is so we will move on to our next game and uh, hopefully we can redeem ourselves because we've got pretty much two games left with this variation of a Lunala build before we move on to Fabian's build in tomorrow's episode so we've got one more here and then one more with and then one more with Fabian's team. So we've got Selena from Germany as our next trainer. We've got trainer one version music. So uh, going up against a team of, we'll hop straight into team preview. It is going to be dual primals, an interesting dual primals team. You're going to see Tapu Koko Alteria, which is uh, going to be the mega of the team. So mega Alteria, it's going to have airlock, I think, or cloud nine, sorry, cloud nine before mega evolves and gets pixelate um, as it's fairy ability with that fairy dragon typing that it becomes after being a flying dragon. Uh, you're going to have Bronzong going to be another form of speed control because Alteria I believe does get tailwind. Bronzong going to be the trick room setter. Uh, you're going to have Gastrodon going to be difficult for us to deal with especially with just a Kyogre so I think this one may call for a little bit of a Moongus action here uh, to help us along the way there. Um, but Lunala are again going to be really actually quite good in this match. My opponent really hasn't got a very solid way to deal with Lunala. So Lunala are going to be something we will utilize, um, I think, quite effectively here. Um, do we want... I definitely want more while for the Trick Room. I think, like, it, we do have to watch out for Gastrodon and Groudon, of course. Um, but outside of that, it does pretty well. I'm going to bring in Moongus and then Kyogre because we definitely need our own Kyogre in this match. And we'll bench Coco and Incineroar. So that's what we'll kick in with. We'll wait for our opponent, who is also just selecting, taking their time. 
It's always good to take as much time as you need as well. There's no point of rushing into matches. It's a good thing to get into the habit of, especially in tournament play, um, unless you're against the clock and you need to, to click in and want to get through a match very quickly. Um, certain situations, but it's always good just reiterating the point, taking your time, just making sure that you're clicking in what you want. It's always, it's never a bad thing. So we're going to see Coco and Kyoga come out for my opponent here. Uh, I mean, we do have to watch out for, I mean, one of the things we could potentially try and do is get our opponent to set up the trick room for us. Um, Gotta worry about the Tapu Koko. Well, the Tapu Koko puts on a lot of pressure on too, primarily our mobile, more than anything else. Um, do we want a trick room now? That's the thing. Or do we just want to? Do we want to just attack into the Kyogre? Maybe size shock into that slot and bring in a Moongus. I think the thing I'd worry about here is the Shadow Shield getting procked and then a Water Spout coming out um, from the the Kyogre. Ooh, thunder. Huh. Wow, okay. But hopefully this is enough so we can survive the water spout from the Kyogre. Um, yeah. We don't really need to worry too much about... Uh, I mean, one of the things we could potentially do here is wide guard and... It's just does the Coco go for Thunder because that's the that's the thing. I I, like, I really don't think the the Tapu Koko goes for a Thunder here. It would be nice to be able to get a Trick Room up for sure. Um, it would also be nice to get the Z move into the Tapu Koko here and Rage Powder potentially. But I feel like you probably go Dazzling Gleam. That's why I would kind of prefer to go Wide Guard and try and get that Grass Knot into the, the Kyogre. Because I think you suspect the Rage Powder here, so you don't Thunder. Volt Switch. Oh, you do it anyway. Oh, okay. I mean... I mean, we've only got ourselves to blame in, in, for that. It's a bit annoying, though. When it's so... Like, that's the thing. Like, it's so obvious in these situations, but... You can understand why my opponent's not doing it because of the, you know, the fact that we could potentially uh, grass knot as well into the Kyogre. Um, <clears throat> the Tapu Koko is going to be difficult for us to deal with if, if we can't keep our Amoongus around. Um, and I'd imagine we'd probably take an Ice Beam here. Yeah, hopefully Amoongus can take this. Should be able to. Yeah, and there's a grass knot which should take the Kyogre down. If not, put it right in range. Yeah. Okay, things aren't too bad. We'll get a Kyogre onto the field. Um, I wonder how. <sighs> it's whether or not that Kyogre has. And the, like the speed of both of these Pokemon in front of us and if the Kyogre has Thunder as well. Because there's a big part of me that wants to just Water Spout and switch Amoongus out so we can preserve that Regenerator and get some health back onto it for later when that, that Tapu Koko is probably going to be a little bit problematic. Um, I'm going to actually protect Amoongus here rather than switch out into Mawile. Ground I'm going to withdraw makes a lot of sense. See Altaria come out, which is fine. Let's see if it's Thunder. It's Origin Pulse. It is faster though. And we do avoid, so that helps us out a little bit. And do some decent damage to that Altaria. Hmm. Mm. I don't know if the Coco comes back in now. Maybe. It's more likely to be the ground on, I think. Ah, oh, it is the Coco. 
Okie dokie. Right, well, we can water spout. And I think rage powder as well. It's whether or not we see the Altaria switch out for Groudon, which we're not going to. Um, we could see a Volt switch. Oh, we're actually going to see a Z move. Okay. I don't know what the Altaria does, though. But the problem with this is that now our weather's locked, so the Groudon comes in, we cannot. Well, uh, the Altaria hasn't actually mega evolved yet, so if it isn't mega, Altaria, which it has to be, right? It has to be. Um, then, then our, our, the weathers don't come into play really. But wow, well, Fire Blast! Are you expecting like more I'll switch in there? Maybe. Wow, I don't really understand that, but okay. <clears throat> Get Tapu Koko onto the field. Uh, I think we just Ice Beam the Altaria, we Sucker Punch the Koko. It's going to be very difficult for us to close this one out though, but we might be able to do it. If we can pick up two knockouts here, then we might be able to. If the Altaria Mega Evolves, then the Rain's in effect, so it can't Fire Blast, so it has to. Uh, okay. This is the problem now, isn't it? Yeah. Now the fire blast definitely gets gets our more out. Unless it misses. It's not the most accurate move. It's like 85%, right? Durian Mega Evolving. It's the lock in that sun. I don't think the sucker punch would have got the Altera from this range anyway. Like we could have iron headed that slot. But, yeah, no protects. Fabulous. Does hit. No. Moel. <laughs> so sad. And now we lose to Tapu Koko 100%. There's no way we can beat it. Although, it is relying on Thunder, so it could miss Thunder. And Precipice Blades would miss. So we're relying on boatloads of misses. Like, hmm. Not be the best of episodes today, but at the same time, we've seen a variety of Pokemon. <sighs> hmm. Okay. Would have liked to have won at least this one. Uh, yeah, I mean, we can only Ice Beam Tapu Koko. Yeah, we've got to hope for two misses. Selena, you're gonna do it. Um, no, I just gone for the more, more standard Volt Switch, and yeah, there's no way we can take a Precipice Blaze from this range. Single target. I'd imagine that's what it is. Um, oh, we do avoid. How many avoids do we need, though? I mean, we're gonna need two, two. I think two, two more. We're gonna have two. This will be the most like cruel thing. And if we do get two, I'll obviously I will forfeit. I think we need more than that. Well, there's one. Let's see. I'm not gonna take the win here. Whatever. We're regardless. If they do miss, so here we go. I think we need. We're gonna need. It's probably gone for a bit more of a standard. We really should take us down. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna call it a day. I'm not gonna risk it because we might get a high roll on this ice beam, and I yeah, I, we don't deserve to win this match. There we go. So very good game to Selena. And uh, that wraps it up for today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. It's been it's been a bit up and down, but it's been fun regardless. We've had some good games, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow with this build. Um, and then, obviously, for the first part, we'll play this team, and then the second part, we'll play Fabian's team, and that'll see us out the rest of the week before we come back with our roulette stuff next week, which will be a lot of fun. So, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Have a great rest of your day, and I will catch up with you all very soon. So, until then, take care, and bye-bye.